So what I'm going to talk about here is the relationship between a binomial distribution and a Poisson distribution. Now, this is a very important result in statistics or probability. And um, I think many of you may have covered this in your probability course. So what I'm going to go over here is a very quick discussion of it. I wouldn't consider this to be a complete, absolute, um, perfect, um, theoretical uh, discussion of these properties. So it's just a, a matter of trying to convince you of the plausibility of the results. Now, first of all, binomial distribution is a situation where we might have uh, an experiment that has two states, on or off, or one or zero, and then the, the, uh, the, the problem is that if we do this experiment n times, what is the probability that k of those n times will be a 1 or a 0? And the binomial distribution is what describes that. So the binomial distribution typically can be written like this. We'll write the probability of k1s, let's say, is n choose k is the binomial coefficient of p to the k, where p is the probability that any experiment gives us a 1. And then 1 minus p is the probability that the experiment gives us a 0. And it's 1 minus p to the k minus, or to the n minus k, sorry. So this is a probability out of n experiments of getting k1s. So as I said, p is the probability of getting a 1. OK, now, the Poisson random variable uh, is, uh, is what happens typically in traffic flow. Uh, Poisson distribution is used to describe uh, vehicle traffic on a highway. So for example, suppose we're standing at a point on the road and we ask the question, in, in one minute, how many cars pass that point? Now we're assuming that we have free traffic flow, not a traffic jam or any unusual situation. And so the, the answer to that question is that we get k cars. So in this case, I'll call it p, and then I'll write p for Poisson k is equal to lambda to the k, all divided by k factorial, e to the minus lambda, like that. Lambda, it turns out here, is the expected number of events. If we're talking about cars past the point, it's the number of cars that pass the point in the time interval. So if we're looking at one minute, then we say that lambda is the expected number of cars we hope to see in that one minute. And the actual number that we see could be larger or smaller. And the probability of seeing k cars is given by this right here. Now, up here, let me write this as probability b for probably binomial. So we have two probability distributions, the binomial and the Poisson. Now, it turns out that the Poisson is also really good at describing all kinds of network or traffic problems. So whether we're talking about vehicles past the point on a highway or packets arriving at a switch or a node, that's also described by a Poisson distribution. And it's under fairly general circumstances. So we might say, if we have 
an expected number of Lambda packets arriving uh, at a node in one second, um, the probability of getting K packets is given by this Poisson distribution here. Or if we're looking again at a communication channel and we have N users, let's say, N is a large number, and we look at what's the expected number of users that try to send a message over a time interval, whether that's one second or one minute, that, it turns out, can also be explained using Poisson if, if the num total number of users n is large. Now, typically, we might actually describe that using the binomial distribution. So we have n potential users, and we're looking at a time interval, let's say one minute, and we ask the question, what is the probability that k users try to send a message in that minute? And p is the probability that any one user tries to send a message. Then the Poisson distribution describes that, that uh, messaging uh, likelihood. However, it turns out that if n is large, and at the same time p here, okay, P is small, this P right here, then the, um, the probability can also be explained approximately, but a very accurate approximation usually, can, the probability can also be explained by the Poisson distribution. So what I want to show you right now is how the binomial distribution becomes the Poisson distribution in the limit as n is very large and p is small. So let, let me talk about that. Okay, so I'm go going to begin uh, here by writing down uh, the probability for the binomial distribution, p of, p, b of k. So, and that is n choose k, n is the total number of potential users p to the k, p is the probability that someone is trying to send a message, 1 minus p to the n minus k. Okay, now, um, I can rewrite this, and I'm going to rewrite it by using, I'm going to say that p, I'm going to define to be lambda over n. So this is a definition. Okay, and I'm not, lambda is just a constant. n is the total number of users. Okay, so p is lambda over n. And now the uh, uh, binomial um, distribution, the binomial coefficient nk is written as n times n minus 1 times n minus k plus 1 over k factorial lambda over n. Now we have this. Oh, wait. Sorry, I don't want to write that there yet. Okay, so this is the definition of the binomial uh, coefficient. Now let me write this probability here like this. The probability of the binomial random variable k is going to be n times n minus 1 dot 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 times n minus, and let me write it like this, k minus 1. So n minus k minus 1 over k factorial p is going to be lambda over n to the k, and then I have 1 minus lambda over n, and then this is raised to the n minus k, like that. Okay, so um, that is what our binomial distribution becomes when we write things out in that way. Okay, now what I want to do is consider what happens 
as n gets very large, and in particular as n approaches infinity. And I'm going to assume that n is very large, which I write like that, and then I'm assume that likewise, similarly, p is going to be very small, much smaller than 1, and I'm setting lambda equal to np. So here we have uh, this distribution here. Okay, now, let me rewrite this probability here, right down here. I'm going to write this as, I'm going to bring the lambda to the k up front. So I have lambda to the k. So that's this lambda to the k here. The k factorial, this term, I'm also going to bring out here. So I'm going to divide it by k factorial, like that. Now I'm going to take the numerator from the binomial coefficient write it like this. Okay, so I'm bringing the k factorial. No, I made a mistake here. I don't want k factorial there. I want n to the k. I want this n to the k term. So n to the k there. So n times n minus 1, okay, in the numerator, n to the k in the denominator. And then I have what's left, which is going to be 1 minus lambda over n to the n minus k. Okay, now, so this n here, if I wanted to, this n right here, I could write that as n minus 0. So I would have n minus 0 here times n minus 1 right here, all the way up to n minus k minus 1. So that's k terms in that numerator. So I can rewrite this as follows. This whole thing is going to be equal to lambda to the k over k factorial. Now I'm going to write n divided by n. I'm going to take one of the n's from that. And then this gets multiplied by n minus 1 to the n. Take another one of those n's. And I go all the way out here to n minus k minus 1 to the n. So I have n, so I have k terms in the numerator and k terms in the denominator. That's what the end of the k is. And this is multiplied by 1 minus lambda over n times n minus k, like that. Okay, now let's uh, rewrite this up as follows then, just slight rearrangement. I'm going to write this as lambda to the k over k factorial. And then this is going to get multiplied by n over n times n minus 1 over n times n minus k plus 1, rewriting that numerator back to its original form, over n. And then this is going to get multiplied by 1 minus lambda over n to the n minus k. So here we've got this. Okay, now, what happens here as n gets large? Well, there's no n whatsoever in that first term. So let me say as n goes to infinity, the question is what happens here? 
So if n goes to infinity, I have equals lambda to the k over k factorial. And as n gets really large and k is fixed, k isn't getting large. So every term here approaches 1 in the limit. Okay, every, every term approaches n over n in the limit as n goes to infinity. So, in, in fact, except for the first term, every term is just a tad bit smaller than 1. But what I'm going to do then is I'm going to look at this as being 1 times 1 times 1 all the way out. So this is just going to be 1 to the k, 1 to the k. And then we have this term right here, which is 1 minus lambda over n to the n, and then 1 minus lambda over n to the negative k, like that. I can rewrite it like that. Now, lambda over n, as n goes to infinity, this thing, this term here, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So I have 1. This term begins to, if this gets smaller, this thing begins to look like 1 over 1 to the k, which is approximately 1. So that goes away. And then I have just this term. And in the limit, as n goes to infinity, uh, this term uh, is a defining term for Euler's constant. So let me write this out. The limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus lambda over n. And it was Leonard Euler who actually proved this when he was deriving Euler's constant. The limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus lambda over n raised to the n power. This goes to um, e to the minus lambda. as proven by Leonard Euler. I'm not going to prove it here. So now, what do I have? I have this thing here, 1 to the k. I have this thing here. This goes to 1. And this thing here goes to Euler's constant. So in the limit, then, as n gets large, this thing looks like lambda over k over k factorial e to the minus lambda. And this is the Poisson distribution. So what I have here is I've gone through a bit of a proof of how the binomial distribution will approach and begin to look like the Poisson distribution as n goes to infinity, and then the assumption is that p, the probability here, uh, p is also going to be small, uh, which is, remember, the relationship here. Okay, now, with that, then we have, in the limit, as n goes to infinity, we have this result. We have the binomial distribution, n choose k, p to the k, of 1 minus p to the n minus k. This thing goes to lambda to the k over k factorial e to the minus lambda, where we have taken lambda equal np like that. Okay, so in the limit, as n goes to infinity, this is what we get. So this is a verification here that the 
binomial distribution approaches the Poisson distribution as the number of users gets large. And this is, this is used, uh, if you look in the book, this is used in the discussion of the um, collisions that occur in, uh, in the Aloha uh, protocol. Okay, now, so until next time.